Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday night emotional awareness discussion. And as usual, every week I bring something a little different and a new guest along. And tonight I have with me Michael Bailey Brown. Hello, Michael. Nice to see you. Hi, everyone. You all right? <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. And so this evening, if you haven't read the bio yet and you are just tagging in off the of notifications, Michael is going to be talking to us um, about what it was like for him growing up in a family where mental health, mental, Ill, mental health issues were present and how that's um, affected him. Um, we'll probably also touch a little bit on how the last year with the pandemic and lockdowns, et cetera, have affected us and changes in circumstances because we all have plans in life at times. Everybody likes to progress and have things to look forward to. And this last year has put a stop to a lot of that for a lot of people. And that can also have a massive impact on emotional well-being. So thank you ever so much for joining me tonight. I'm really, really grateful, Michael. Thank you. No, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. And uh, so you are going by your, your professional setup there, unlike me just talking to the computer screen. You have an incredibly professional setup there because you started podcasting last year as well, haven't you? Yeah, so back in May last year, I uh, set up my podcast, uh, Tangled Mind Podcast, um, and I set that up off the back of obviously what we're going to be talking about this evening and um, with my dad suffering with mental health. Um, and I set it up to get people from all over the world talking uh, about mental health because it's massively important to do so and also to mm -hmm. try and just give some give people uh, a safe space to be able to talk um, to other people about their own issues or whether even the family member, so like from my my sort of in my shoes, basically. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I'm on I'm on my episode thirty five. I had about two months out of it just because, well, I could um, really, yeah. and I just needed a bit of me time. Yeah, well, that's important to address as well, isn't it? And that sometimes when you make these commitments is it's it's okay to say do you know what i'm having a break and come back to it that's not a, not an issue it's not, i know mm. i've set myself a 52 week challenge um but you know i i enjoy doing this on a tuesday night and having this this really meaningful conversation um but, but i love the title tangled mind so how are you inspired obviously you're saying about it being off the back of your, your dad's mental health but where did the title come from how did you so, uh, oh, I I came up with so many different names and it got to a point where I reached out to um, a couple of other guys that I, I speak to on a regular basis. And I, I also reached out to my my followers on Instagram and said, look, yeah. it's either this or this. And obviously I, I, I can't just call it minds because obviously there's already the minds charity there's yeah. and it was trying to find something that's a bit unique yeah and obviously tangled tangled minds i thought well a lot of people that are suffering with mental health their minds are a bit scrabbled they they mm. their, their heads are all over the place they don't really know what's going on a lot of them um or or how to deal with it or the best places to deal with it so i thought well tangled mind it's it's a perfect name in it it, mm. it suits the bill yeah and that's absolutely. that's really all it was no i really like it actually and it's really catchy very catchy mm. um but yeah so it's amazing i've heard about your podcast mentioned through several people i've spoken with so you know i know it's becoming quite popular um yeah but yes that's very very brave challenge as well to take that discussion on the back of family um being surrounded with mental health issues and uh, so so tell us a little bit more about um obviously you say on the back of your dad so tell us a bit about the, the journey with your dad and what that's been like growing up with him so my dad's my dad's been suffering with his mental health for the past what, 20 one, 22 years maybe maybe a little bit more um, nine, I think it was 99, 98, 99 that he, he first started suffering. Um, but when I was, the, the, the first time I really noticed anything with what was going off was 
Um, it's hard for me to talk about, but it's at the same time it, it's important because mm. for for me, I was only six, seven years old, and okay. when when my dad attempted to take his own life, mm-hmm. and um, but I remember, I remember a lot of it. Um, that I remember the the police officer saving his life, breaking the garage doors down. Um, at the time, my mum, I was upstairs and I could, I, I was, I was in the back, I was, I went to the bathroom window and they were all outside on in the back garden. My bedroom was at the front, the bathroom was at the back, look overlooking the garage um, in the back garden, mm. and that's just where he was. Um, and then over the years, he's on several occasions it like gone off to attempt to take his own life again um got just um he, last year is it last year or the year before or something like that he 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 went missing um mm-hmm. and he basically sent a message saying look i'm i'm not coming home to my mum which mm. was hard because I'm sat up here. I get a phone call off my sister saying dad's gone missing and he's, he's text mum saying he's not coming home and he, he's sorry. And obviously I'm up here 300 miles away from where they are. And my mm. automatic reaction was right. He, it, it's, this is it. This, this I'm, we're just waiting for the phone call now. And mm. luckily mm-hmm. he, he did, he didn't try anything. He didn't attempt, attempt anything. Um, again but he it he got to a point where because of all of the pressure and everything of him being suicidal it got to a point where he felt that he needed to take himself away from everybody else and let us live our lives and not he, he felt like a burden basically um yeah. and luckily my my mom my mom and the police they all contacted his work and his work he turned up at work later the day in the the day um well about 12 hours later i think it was um and he then basically got turned away from work and my mum uh, my nana and my sister sisters found him in uh just sat in the car park um mm. at the local at the local supermarket yeah. Yeah, and he basically yeah. slept in the car overnight because he feels like he was a burden and didn't really need need to be putting us all down but that's mm. not the case at all because obviously we all love him and we just want what's best for him yeah and he's obviously a very very special man because you've still all stood by him all these years um, absolutely you know, your mum's with him so there's got to be something really special about him too and uh hopefully he's aware of that um because your mum was on this show when i did the 28 night live challenge and i know she talked about it from her point of view um, trying to support him all these years. So, do you remember that time when he was younger, before he hit the mental health sort of session? I can't even think the right word. Sort of Not, hit that mindset. So, do you remember him being like of a different mindset when he was younger? Or I can't remember any of it. Literally, all I've ever all I've ever known with my dad from my first not my first memory because I was I can remember little bits from when I was younger, mm. but at the same time, it's. It, that that's my first like proper memory of dad being ill with his mental health, and it, yeah. it it's got to a point where it it's the norm. Yeah. We 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 know it, dad dad suffers with mental health, um, and it, he's never not going to, I suppose. Um, well, there's, there's always that hope that it's no longer the norm, isn't there? Always. Yeah, um, yeah, and I get that. And in, you know, I know my my own son was suicidal for twelve years, um. So I do understand that there is that that burden of day to day life, watching over somebody, and literally, it's 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 like leaving kids by a swimming pool where you can't take your eye off them, and it's that kind yeah. of level of anxiety. You know, if you leave a toddler by a swimming pool, you do, you don't look away for more than a couple of minutes, and when you've got yeah. somebody in the house who is suicidal you have that kind of sensation with it. But just because yeah. it's an anxiety and it's a responsibility and a burden, you don't not do it and say, oh, it's not my problem. When you care about somebody, that is what you do for them. 
you know, as hard as it is, as draining as it is, and, and I do know you, you, you don't give up hope and you will always, always be there fighting for them. And I know I understand that. But I also understand um, how I you know from my point of view as a parent or from yours as a son, your mum's as a, as a wife and, you know, in, in that sort of family caring role, how draining it is on your own mental health as well. You know, emotionally, it's 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 not so much the burden, it's it's the exhaustion from it at times when you need, like you said, he took that day out to go and sleep in his car and sometimes you just need that space, don't you? Personal yeah. space. Well, you said you had a couple of minds off your podcast, a couple of months off your podcast. Yeah. And it, it's finding ways when somebody else is suicidal every single day, it's been able to find those ways and strategies to get a bit of personal space or still making sure they're safe. Um, so, so how between you and your mum, you know, obviously you've you've been a great support to your mum as well, by the sounds of it. Um, you sound like a I'd really like close so. family. So how do you all ensure that you each get your own personal space? It, it's hard because, obviously, for me, it's got to a point where, for, for my own mental health, it, I, I'm struggling a lot more now and i'll openly say that to 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 anybody i am i am struggling i I'm, i know you know a couple of the guys that i do harmony and mark and jeffrey and all of them yes. um I'm, I'm in the mastermind group with them and i've had to take a, a couple of weeks out of it because i'm just i'm not in the right mindset to be sat there and focusing on what i've got to do with the, my podcast and things I've still got I've got episodes that are edited and out there ready to go but for me it's it's harder to ha make sure that my mum's got her own space and things like that because obviously I don't live there but yeah for 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 as a family yeah I I'd, I'd like to I'd like mm. to think that I support my mum as best as I can because out of the three of us, me, me and my sisters, I am the oldest. So okay, yeah. I I will automatically sort of if anything's going off, I will automatically make sure mum's okay and dad's mm. dad's okay as can be and making sure the girls are all right. But at the same time it's it's hard because I don't live down there and I'm like I say I'm three hundred miles away. I can't, if anything's going off, I can't just nip round the corner to, and say, like, come on, right, just come round to ours for a couple of hours just to get away and just to take yeah. that little bit of time. And I'd love to. I, 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 yeah. I will be. I will move down there eventually. Um, but obviously, financially and things like that, it, I'm not in the the right place to be able to afford to move down there, if that makes sense, because it's yeah, not the cheapest a place to live down in Cornwall. No, 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 it's a uh, well thought after area, despite all the rainfall down there. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yes, uh, good evening to Yvette, who's on the show this evening as well. And Ralph has also just popped in. So nice to see you. And I've seen a few other people popping in and out. So if anybody who wants to ask any questions at all at any point from Michael or for myself, just pop something in the chat and, and we will be watching. Um, so, yes, it's um, you, you also said backstage as well that, you haven't actually seen your mum for about a year and that's a big toll isn't it when when you are a close family um and there's lockdown this last year and not being able to travel outside your area if you're 300 miles away you can't just meet up somewhere for a walk and, and just have a quick chat with her and so you know ha how have you found it trying to keep in touch over video and things it's been very very hard um obviously i i I work full time as well as doing the podcast on 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 the side, um, mm -hmm. and I I'm either at work and I don't finish till eight o'clock at night. I'm actually off today, hence why I'm not at work now. Okay. Um, but for for me, <laughs> but for for me, the video calls are great. But I, I I'm an emotional guy. Um, I, I like to. I just want to give my mum a hug. I just want to give my dad a hug and tell him everything's going to be all right and be there for them. Um, yeah. And it's it's been hard to not be able to do that 
for so long. Yeah. For the first, last Christmas, for the first time ever, I've never, I didn't see for the first, last year. Yeah, for the first time, I'm 27, and first time in 27 years, I, I've not seen my parents at Christmas, which yeah. was weird because, like I say, because we are such a close family, we're normally either we'd either go down there or they'd come up here at Christmas, and yeah, it's it's got to that point mm-hmm. now where it's. It, it, it hurts because I just want to give him a hug. <laughs> I bet, yeah. But you've got to live with the hope that it's going to be not too long before you can. Um, the time will oh, so. come out, etc. cetera. Um, you know, it, it's compared to the time that we've been away, the time we're going to be able to meet up with people again is that much closer now. So uh, with the summer, even if it's sort of booking adjacent holiday caravan somewhere, isn't it? <laughs> sort of meeting uh, up, but, you know. I know, um, I can't wait <laughs> yeah no I certainly hope it's not too long and you know for lots of people's sake because there's lots I mean I've been fortunate enough to see my family um not necessarily in their homes but I've either seen them outside at some point in the last year or say with my daughter because I'm single I'm at least able to bubble with one family yeah. and because one of my grandchildren needs a lot of care I'm able to bubble with them for care reasons and, and childminding because um, if my daughter has to go to the doctors and she's got a, a child who's type 1 diabetic and going into a, a hypo and a coma up sort of level, she can't be dealing with him while she's in her own appointment. So I have to be there for emergency care for them. So um, yeah. for me, I've had the luxury, if you can call it, of being able to go and medically look after my grandchild, which um, sounds like a strange way of saying it's a luxury. But this last year, that absolutely is. Um, yeah. And, and yes, the one day she did decide to ask me to babysit to go for an appointment, he had everything. Um, it's quite funny because he was having a hypo. He wouldn't come out of it. The dog was throwing up. The daughter was doing something else. <laughs> it's like I had the whole works. And in the middle of it, my mum's ringing up and saying, um, we haven't had chips since Christmas. Would you be able to drop some off tonight? And I'm like, no, not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so she wanted chip delivery. And I said, no, I'll have to do that another week. But... <laughs> Um, but yeah, it tends to all happen at once when it happens. But no, I'm, I'm, my goodness, I'm so rooting for you all getting back together as a family. Um, because hey, having spoken to your mum, spoken to you, knowing what you all go through, um, I can't imagine how hard that is. Um, so yeah, no, it's very so hard. You're still working. You've you've got an amazing little family of your own, little one to look after and cuddle as well. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'm, I've been working. The first lockdown, so last well year when the first one a year ago, wasn't it? I was on furlough for five months. Um, but then since then, I went back to work last August, and I've I've worked through, thankfully, because it is I just needed to be at the house and obviously be able earning the yeah. the money we need to be to be able to live. Um. But at the same time, yeah, we've been. Uh, I, I'm a kitchen designer for Ren Kitchens, so for me, it's oh, wow. it's obviously busy, and people are still needing to finish building their houses or putting mm-hmm. kitchens in, or finish off renovating from p- before lockdowns and things like that. So, yeah, it's it's a case of still working, and yeah, like you say, I've got um, I was helping got my fiance downstairs i've got my little boy down theo downstairs and i've got my other two with my um ex-partner um riley and poppy which well, i see them as much as i can um on my days off so yeah, yeah. it's 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 good still having yeah. my own little family here but yeah the wider family is um what it's everyone just needs as important. yeah absolutely exactly. just as important yeah um, so no, I'm, I am um, so really rooting for you to all get back together as a mate, a big family this year, and uh, looking forward to seeing lots of photographs when it happens. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm really sure you will. I'm <laughs> sure. You, I'm sure you will. My mum posts everything <laughs> on Facebook. Everything. Yeah, I know she was posting today. What a proud mum she is! You coming on here tonight? <laughs> she she was so happy to see you coming to talk, um, and I can I can understand that. I mean, cracky, I was proud enough you know after the journey I've had with my son with his suicidal depression and I'm I am extremely fortunate now that I know that he's out of that danger zone 
yeah. um, and that I don't have to worry about him day to day. And he's been my rock the last year in a way uh, between him and my daughter because of going through all the separation and that last year. Yeah. And uh, they've, they've been great support to me, but at the same time, I've still supported them. Um, you know, because my husband, my, my son left work last year to take his HGV and then it got cancelled and then it got postponed again and then this kept going on and then he took it and missed it by one point, rescheduled it and then we went into the second lockdown so he still hasn't taken it and he left work in April to take it and still hasn't taken the, 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 the finished exams. So he's now working in a factory but I know there was that huge gap in between where he was... Um, sort of struggling for work and it really took a toll on him again as well um but yeah once once he's found his he's found his place and a nice little job again now and he's quite happy again but um it, i think this year relief I, I, knowing that i yeah. haven't got to worry about him every single day is 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 an absolute dream compared to what we went through for 12 years so i, I can't imagine what you you know your mum's struggled with for over 20 years she's done really well yeah she's 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 the, she's she's my rock. So my dad is my 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 parents are my, my everything, and it's like for, yeah. for for what they've done for me, it's it's my turn to step up and do what I can for them. And awesome. the, this yeah. podcast, my my podcast, it it is my it's my coping mechanism. But at the same time, my my dad and my mum both listen to my shows. And oh, that's amazing. so yeah. for my dad, a lot of the people that come on the shows, I have people that suffer with BPD, which is what my dad dad, dad suffers with, BPD, borderline personality disorder. Mm. And I have pe- other people that are in my shoes, my mum's shoes, um, mm. or even the like professionals. And my my dad, like I say, my dad listens to every episode. Um, I had one. I've had one last go out yesterday. I've um, I've had every week pretty much, apart from about three weeks around four weeks around Christmas. Um, yeah. I didn't have an episode, but I, they're like backed up. So, no, it is it is important. But what you were just saying then, I think this year financially, that's been a massive strain on so many people in this it, it, no matter where they are whether they're in in the uk where we are or uh, uh, anywhere else in the world yeah. the, the the whole pandemic financially has put strain on many many families yes yeah absolutely and finances are always going to cause emotional issues mm. um you know sometimes when people suddenly win too much money in one go that causes just as many issues but Money is always going to be an issue, but it's working around that and finding that balance in life. Um, but this last year, it's it, when things have come to a stop and every human being thrives on progress. Um, before I carry on, I'm just going to share, because um, Yvette's also put here, I haven't seen my family for over a year and really miss them and their hugs. Uh, this has been one of the hardest things we've had to do, to isolate, and I can't wait for that day. And I think we're all in that boat. You know, it just We just can't wait for life to get back to normal. And, it, um, it is important, and I'm sure anybody else that is it is hasn't seen their family or friends for that long period of time. It 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 mm-hmm. will start init- for that initial that initial couple of months. It it wouldn't have been so bad, but then when it's dragged and dragged and dragged and got to that point now where mm-hmm. it's been a year, if not a little bit more, yeah, it's got to that not breaking point but it's got to that point now where a lot more people are are, are just needing to it's like rock be bottom, hugged isn't it? Yeah. yeah oh yeah absolutely absolutely yeah, it's like rock bottom but the amazing thing is in in every do you know what? i'm going to share this briefly because a bit on the back of the book um because when i teach emotional awareness i teach it in terms of this diagram and the happiness is at the top when we talk about high energy and happy and positivity is always at the top with depression we talk about the pit uh, being stuck in a rut you know depression is like being in the dark rock bottom mm-hmm. all the language we use about it is about down here at the bottom and it's at that feeling at the bottom here not knowing how to get up through either whatever's made you angry or whatever's made you sad so it's about facing up to whatever it is that's put you there and for most people that is a natural sort of fighting strategy to, to work through something 
but this lockdown has just put a stop to it and it's like um last year we were trying to separate and move apart you know my husband and I and lockdown put a stop to it and locked us down together for the last four months of our separation while I'd lost a job and couldn't find a new job because of the lockdown but at the same time I then couldn't deal with housing issues because I'd lost a job and I'm trying to go to separate so I understand that when you're used to progress and you thrive on progress and then all that progress is halted the the only thing that's going to happen is if you're not living in this state up here in the happy state you will be in one of the other three and this is the thing with the lockdown and so many more people struggling with emotions this year is that the lockdown has put a halt to finding those happier moments and being able to make progress in life and that's automatically impacted emotional well-being and mental health um so i fully fully understand it with everybody and it's about how to find ways to make small amounts of progress in your personal life, even when the bigger things are hold, held back. Mm. I mean, you, you say you've been fortunate enough to still keep working, but then finances are an issue. Um, but I understand you've also had some other, other celebrations put on hold as well, haven't you? Yeah, unfortunately, um, on the 2nd of March, me and Olivia were, were meant to be getting married. Um, and it got to a point where about four weeks before, five weeks before, um, we had to cancel it and postpone it. And it's now not until, well, 15th of Feb next year. So it's, oh, a, whole year it, away. Goodness. It's a, it's a year away, but at the same time, uh, we're, we're still together. We're still happy. Um, the time will come for us to get married. Um, yeah where there's there's it's not put any strain on our relationship we're we're both that's good well we're, everything is perfectly perfect between us um but it's like like me and olivia have said although it's a bit of a bummer that we, we we've not been able to tie the knot um for us and, and like me mainly because my i've got a bigger family than olivia for for us to postpone that wedding, it now means that we can have the family there that we want there, um, without having to limit numbers and and everything else, which oh, is massively important for me because I want I want my parents there, I want my grandparents there, and um and obviously we're only having a small wedding anyway, so it's just going to be the immediate family, um, like my mum, my parents, my children, um, grandparents, sisters. Um, and then in the reception, that's when any any Tom de Canary can come along and <laughs> celebrate. But yeah. that the initial the initial ceremony, there's there's only like twenty of us there, but it's what we want. Sounds perfect. That's, that's all I had at my wedding was twenty two people. So yeah, it sounds ideal. Absolutely yeah. perfect. Um, but yes, no. Well, I wish you all the best for next year on that, and congratulations. And it's it's so lovely that you've got the solid relationship for that. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's definitely difficult when life puts a hold and, and we're used to that progress and having goals and you move towards those goals, whether they're forced or whether they're chosen. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been able to put things behind you and say either, yes, I did it or, OK, that one's out of the way, I can move on. So whichever mindset you're going through, it's still that progress that matters. And, and it's been able to find ways to still achieve that because that's caveman brain. Caveman brain says, right, you know, we we don't stay happy all the time, even when life's perfect, because you're yeah. like, yeah, happy, 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 and then it's like, bored now, what do we do next, you know, <laughs> and your brain automatically wants to move on to the next challenge, so it's just like how to keep doing that, so that's where um, it's amazing that you've chosen to do the podcast, because that's given you those little challenges to keep you going, and and, and I'm amazed to hear that your dad talks about it, so how does he respond to them? My, my dad's one of these guys that it doesn't it doesn't I don't really know how to say this but my dad's one of these that if I say love you dad he'll go you too mate yeah but more recently he actually says it back which is nice um and I, I know from and I know for a fact that because he said it, and my mum, my mum said it, that they're they're both 
just proud of what I'm doing. And that's all that any any child, that's all they want. They just want them to make their parents proud. And that's good. The, yeah. it, for, for my mum and dad to, uh, to say that, obviously, they're, they're proud of what yeah. I do and the fact that I'm using such a, um, a difficult thing that we're going through as a family um, to try and help um, or prevent something that uh, could happen in somebody else's life. Mm. I'm, I'm turning what's sometimes a negative for us into a, what, what should be a positive for everybody else. Um, and then, like I said to you before, my podcast, um, I, I'm, I personally, I, I'm, I, when I was younger, I was one of these that didn't really talk. I used to keep myself to myself. But with the podcast, like doing these lives, and and I, I before I had a YouTube channel, but I stopped the YouTube channel because I didn't like being on camera and that sort of thing. But mm. for me, the podcast has been a help, coping mechanism for me dealing with my dad's depression. But then at the same time, it's been a confidence boost for me because now I, I can openly talk. I can talk more. I will talk more confidently about the podcast uh, and obviously everything that's going on. So yeah, my mum and dad, they, they, they're proud of what I do. Um, well, so at least it's what they told me. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, but at the same time, yeah. Don't it, say that if they don't mean it. <laughs> but then at the same time, the 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 podcast it it, it helps mm. them both. Um, uh, well, they've not said that, but if from my dad listens to every episode, and my mum listens to every episode. Um, and one good. thing I will say is I, I'm I'm super proud of both of them for being able to talk to each other um, as much as they can about my dad's mental health, and I'm also really proud of my mum because my mum's obviously sat her own podcast up i love always lisa yeah, yeah so she just recently started that hasn't she yeah she just mm. recently started that so i i obviously I, I i'm not one that would normally say directly to them but i am i am genuinely proud of my mum for plucking the courage up and and doing it herself um, and, you've, and you've said it on camera now, so you can't take it back. <laughs> yeah, and it's live. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> and I know she's proud of you because the way she was posting today. So. <laughs> but no, that's that's amazing. And it's it's nice that you all inspire each other. And it's so mm. important. And 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 I think sometimes it's it's quite easy for parents to, because it's quite interesting, there's a concept about there are different modes for talking and there's parenting um, and there's child and then there's neutral so when you're having a two-way conversation it's like one person talks like the parent mode and talks down or the other person talks like the child and acts like the dependent in a conversation or there's this level of neutral conversation and it sounds like you've all amazingly reached that neutral level which is something that doesn't always happen in a family situation yeah. and some parents will always talk on the parent level <laughs> And it's very difficult for them to come down to that neutral level. And some children always feel like no matter how old they get, when they go and see their parents, it's like, you know, they feel like they've, they're being spoken down at. So it's amazing that you've all seemed to have found that neutral ground to talk. And I think yeah, it's, really it's important for other people to acknowledge and recognize as well. It yeah. is important for anybody to talk, whether it's family, whether it's friends and, uh, the other day I was watching, um, I don't know if you've seen it, but I was watching on BBC. I think it was BBC. I was watching, what's going on here? I don't know. <clears throat> can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly clearly, Michael. I have absolutely no idea where your image has gone. But... My camera's disappeared. Uh, yeah, Right, I'll try and talk while you fiddle around with it. That's not a problem. Yeah. So I, um, I, I, yeah, I was watching on BBC the Roman Kemp, um, something is. I think he has a internet issue. Right. Apologies for that. So, um, yes, for anybody who's following this so far, um, Michael 
hopefully will be back with us in a minute. We have no idea what happened there. Um, his mum, Lisa, was one of the guest speakers when I did the 28 night live discussion uh, back in November, December and talked about her husband's bipolar, not bipolar, borderline personality disorder and the struggles they've had as a family. Um, so I'm really grateful tonight for her son, Michael, their son, Michael, to come and talk about it from his point of view. And this is a really brave share. It really is. And it must have been so difficult growing up in a household where he, you know, he's aware that his father's been suicidal all these years and has a great deal of emotional issues. And, um, you know, if his dad's ever watching this, you know, I my heart goes out to you. And I understand that, you know, how Michael has said things about how his father feels like a burden. But I also know from a mum's point of view, when my son was suicidal for 12 years, that for my son, it wasn't about him being a burden to me. And I didn't want him to feel that way. And that would be my plea is don't feel that way. If anybody out there is feeling suicidal, do not feel like you're a burden on your family. And there is a really, really important word that I want to share. And it's very, <clears throat> very conveniently come up on the week that I'm doing this as a topic in my Facebook group. And it is the word interdependence. And if anybody doesn't know what the word interdependence is about, then please do go and look it up and realize that you you can work with your family and you do need to open up and talk with them right michael's back in the background i'm bringing and bringing back on um but in, interdependence is really important um to embracing it and when you realize how you work independent interdependently with the family and try to focus less on the being independent it, again, it helps to ease some of those family relationships and bring people back together. So welcome back, Michael. I think it was that your internet playing up again. Yeah, it's doing, it's doing my head in, trust me, but seriously. Yeah. Well, we've done well, um, considering you got kicked off before we went live, and you've managed to go nearly 40 minutes in before getting kicked off again. That was pretty impressive. So, Yeah, um, I'm, I'm impressed. But we're still here. We're still here. So, yeah, so we're just saying for, from my point of view, and you'll be able to see on the replay what we're filled in is just um, for anybody who feels when they're in that emotional state of feeling suicidal or feeling like they're dependent on a family or, or that the family feels like they're a burden is not to. And one of the most powerful words that I helped my son to understand was the power of interdependence and actually mm -hmm. embracing that things are easy when people accept working together now I know as a family you do and it's one thing to say we're a family and we all know you know when you've got your people in the same house or same family you, we, we know the word family but the word interdependence really adds another level to that into accepting being able to openly talk to people and actually sometimes that open talk takes away the burden because one of the things I found with my son um, not that it was a burden, but I found it more stressful when he didn't want to talk to me and when he shut me out because I knew he needed the support the most at those points. And I found it so much easier when he was finally able to open up and talk to me. And for my son, it was, it was a very long time where he did shut me out for about five years um, in terms of I knew he was depressed and we struggled to get him back day to day to day just to keep him afloat. Um, there was there was a five year stretch where it was really quite severe. Um, <clears throat> but it was this this point of interdependence and then building up some other strategies that helped to open up that conversation. And the more he learned to be open about how he felt rather than hiding it, the easier it was to support him and the less the burden it was on me as a parent. So I understand yeah. that, you know, trying to explain it from from my point of view rather than you know it's really really important we talk about mental health in terms of what it is to go through it and and how you feel suffering with depression and all the other mental health illnesses but it's also important for them to understand what it's like from the supporters point of view in actually just just being open it really really does help and just, just not to not to worry about the people that you are around and being a burden you know if, if you're a burden on them and you tell them and they just say look i don't want to know about it then 
then, then talk to somebody who does. You know, there will be somebody who will listen, and that's really important. So, anyway, so yes, welcome back. Look, once I get on one, I keep going. You can stop me anytime. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. I was listening to what you're saying. It is true because, <laughs> like, for the amount of people, but my dad, for one, the, he he he's always says that he. he he sort of feels like he's a burden to us and he, he feels like he would be better it would be better for us if he wasn't here. Mm. But at the same time, what what when people when when he says that, what he he needs to understand is if he is here and he is he is feeling the way he is. Mm. Uh, we would much prefer him to be here and be ill and has be able to support him as best as we can. And and obviously with all the, the, the therapies, the medications, whatever it may be. But at the same time, we need to support him as much as we need that same support. Because yes. it's it, although it's affecting my dad's mental health, it 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 does have that knock on effect, as you, as you know, to yeah. us and and to that rest wider family. Because mm. we're always worried that well, I am. I'm always worried that I'm going to get a phone call from my mum saying, "Dad's gone." Yeah, and. I the last time I saw my mum and dad, my dad actually openly said to me that he knows it will happen, but he just doesn't. He can't. Tell, he doesn't know when, because as much as he's battling inside, he knows that it's horrible saying that. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. It's just like he he just. Is focused on the fact, yeah, he's not definitely not over it. Not, yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah, 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 I'm fine, yeah, yeah, no, that's very difficult if he's still focused on it happening. Um, yeah, that, that's a major strain and on all of you. Um, but at the same time, I'm sure if it was the other way around and you were feeling that way, he'd want you to be open rather than hide it, um, absolutely. And, you know that was my son was you know my son would say but I don't want to burden you with my problems and I said the fact that you're hiding your problems and you don't want to talk about them burdens me as much as if you mm -hmm. you know it would burden me less if you're open and talk about it and then we can find solutions but um that was I think slightly that's different, I... slightly different though with, with your dad having that that diagnosis um but yeah at the same time it, you know it's finding those strategies to work together as a family isn't it to just to also all because if you're all all suffering mental health with the lockdown and not being able to see each other as well again that's just the energy vibe from everybody is just not going to help him either um as much as all of you so again it's it's just so important we keep holding out for the end of lockdown to where everybody can get to see each other again and uh <clears throat> finding finding ways to keep that energy level up until then but do you need a moment? Are you okay? I'm all right. Yeah, I'm all right. Now, I think that's one of the. I think that's one of the reasons why I will openly let people know how I'm feeling because yeah. I know my dad struggled with it, and I know my dad feels. Like he can't or, or doesn't want to trouble us, so I, I'm I, I will quite gladly tell people and say to people like, look, this is this is the way that I'm feeling. I need I need time to just get myself back on track. I'm not. I don't feel suicidal. I don't feel anything like that. I just feel. I feel stressed. I feel mm. a little bit low at times. Um, but if I'm being honest, today 
today's been been good. Um, I, we've 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 spent the day. Obviously, I've, I've been off work, so I've had that little bit of rest from work. But me and me and Olivia, my fiance, we've we've sorted the garden out. We've jet washed the garden. We've painted the fences. We've just had a full day of it, and it's it it's it's been a good day. That's amazing. Again, that progress, isn't it? Having something for your mind to progress on and have an achievement. Mm. And and I think that's um, important to acknowledge in terms of um, being able to find those days where you can set even small challenges or small targets and be able to work towards them. And then when you get an achievement, that automatically releases those positive chemicals in the brain, like the dopamine and the oxytocin and things. And uh, it's about being able to find ways to do that on, with a purpose um, and I think yeah. it's important for a lot of people to recognise when, when you're suffering with depression and stress and anxiety is even if you've got bigger challenges like you said not being able to see your family not being able to uh, go through you know put your wedding in place this year and, and all the challenges that so many people are facing but being able to do something even like painting your garden fence I'd love to be able to do that but I don't have a garden at the moment <laughs> Um, so that's one thing I'm missing this year is being able to get in my garden because I had a big garden last year and now I've got nothing. So um, I did go out and treat myself to some. I can't see it on here. This is, this is my new garden. <laughs> I've <only laughs> some hyacinths and that's the limit of my garden at the moment. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's really important to be able to have something to achieve and look forward to. And for me, it's little things like that. Because I need, I, you know, same as everybody else, I need those little rewards and things to look forward to. And those are the things that, you know, they might be small, but you have to, I was about to say, imagine life like a seesaw in that life will chuck all the shit on one end of the seesaw and it's going to tip. <laughs> but mm -hmm. nobody is going to come along and put the good stuff on the other end. You have to do that yourself. And the more yeah. life chucks on one end, I can never get this on camera, the more life chucks on one end, the more you've got to put on the other end on purpose to balance it up again. And I think it's really important to acknowledge that and say, right, what can I do? And I think affirmations are a really, really powerful way of dealing with this. And one of the books I've talked about the most this year, which really, really helped me, despite having written my own book, um, the one that helped me the most this last year was a book called What to Say When You Talk to Yourself. It's all about self-belief, positive affirmations, and saying them in the right way. It's it's really important into what words and terminology you use within those affirmations. And I'm surprised they've set it up this five different levels of self-talk. And it's about gradually increasing your ability to use those affirmations for positive self-talk and build belief. And uh, I would highly recommend that as, you know, for anybody who's struggling this year to find that positivity is to put that self-talk in place and build up that. Put those little challenges, even if it is sitting down on a weekend doing a jigsaw puzzle or, you know, <clears throat> setting a target to go for a walk for five days. Like you said, Mark Jeffries has done the... Uh, um, walk and talk. Group. He, yeah, he did the 28-day walking challenge on uh, yeah. Boxer. And I must admit, I did start that and did three days, and then I pulled out of that one because... I'd overloaded, I'd got to a point where on the other hand, you can set challenges in place and put too many and burn out. And that's what I did. I'd been putting little positive challenges in place. And then I found like, well, I've got too many to achieve and I was struggling. So I had to pare back a little bit so I could focus on a couple and actually ensure that I achieved them for success. And, you know, to put something really positive in life again. So it was about finding again, that balance. You sort of, you want to, balance the scales you get all the, the crap on one end you put all the positive filter in the other end but you don't want to overdo it to burn out you want to balance um so that that's my little strategy so how what sort of things apart from the podcast do you do anything else where you you know any hobbies or anything films you like watching etc where you you find that they uh, help you to balance life out <laughs> honestly i could I, i'm not i don't really do anything else um I come I, for me when I left school um when I left school I pretty much had my my first son um okay. well I was I was 18 19 18 something like that I don't even know I was young so 
for me, like the minute I left school, all of the mates that I had sort of stopped talking to me as soon as I became a dad. Um, um, but uh, and so I don't really go out. I don't really socialize too much. Um, I got the podcast. I've got the family. I'm 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 a bit of a I'm a bit obsessed with cars. So I'm, I'm always just yeah. I, I I do like my cars. Um, but at the same time, there's mm. apart, literally apart from that that I don't really do a lot. The mm. podcast is 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 a hobby to me as well as like self therapy as such. Um, but just going on to just jump, just quickly jumping back to what you were saying a minute ago about the 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 like seesaw if, effect. Yeah. One of the things that I I was talking to somebody a couple of well, last year, um, and one of the biggest things that I, I'll always remember them saying talking about was the circle of influence. Yes. Um and and the circle of influence and how that you've obviously got um the inner circle and then the two outer that sort of outer layers and obviously that inner circle is what you can control and act. Um so like what you buy, uh, what you read, that sort of thing, what you invest in, um, time you spend with your friends and family, um, your hobbies. Then obviously mm-hmm. you've got the the second layer, which is like obviously the circle of influence itself, which mm-hmm. is having your business to ex- uh, succeed, um, mm-hmm. promotions at work, your health, mm-hmm. and then obviously the stuff that you can't, control up control but it's also a concern is Mm. like natural disasters the news uh war celebrity gossip that sort of stuff um just government activities that anything that's going off in the world but for me like i i personally it unless it affects me anything in that circle of concern i don't really give a monkey's about yeah. If okay. if it, if it, if if it's going to affect me, that's when I'll start worrying about it. If it's yeah. not, yes, it's not nice, but at the same time, there's not a lot I can do. If you focus on the stuff that you can control, so how much you're spending on such so this and what you're buying, what you're wearing, and articles you you can write about and things all of that sort of stuff the stuff that you can physically control if you focus on that first yeah. then the other things will just gradually fall into place so yeah. it's it's just another way of seeing what you basically said is obviously yeah. you've got you've got all of the shit that goes off in the world you you focus on the stuff that can act you're, you're acting but yeah, yeah the circle of it circle of influence is what i what i sort of look at yeah, no, that's really important as well. And I like the quote saying that you become the average of the 10 people you spend most time with. And I think yeah. that's an important one to tie in with the circle of influence is, is your, yeah. you know, who is your circle of influence? And if you've got 10 people in your family that you spend a lot of time with and they are your circle of influence, but you find that some of those family tend to have a more negative influence on you, it could be extended mm-hmm. family, you know, as well or it could be you've got work colleagues who are a bit um mouthy or bullyish or you know somebody you struggle to work with but if you've got 10 people in your life um who you know you can sit down and work out who they are it might just be the cashier you speak to at the supermarket if you you know if you're on furlough or something but you sit down and write down those 10 people that you see the most and if there's somebody in there you find that is not adding such a positive vibe to your life you don't have to always cut them out but there are other ways to shifting their level on that circle of influence. Like the ones who are at like 9, 10 and 11, you can move them down the rank by adding in books, um, YouTube channels and watching mentors on YouTube. There are loads of people on online to watch who are all really positive influences, like motivational mm-hmm. speakers, inspirational speakers, podcasters, and um, watching shows like this every week. And you can add those in. It could be your favourite musician and listening to music or watching a particular TV series. 
um, and again all the, the personal development books and by adding those into life what you can do is that becomes a person who is sharing something with you becoming a part of an influence over you even though you don't meet them personally and it's a really powerful way when you acknowledge it to say right these are the people at the top of my influence list that I want there and then the rest of the people are still important to me, but you fill in those gaps in between with these other ways of learning from people. Because the reason we do shows like this, the reason other people have YouTube channels, is because they have wisdom and lessons to teach other people. Mm. And you don't have to know that person in person to go and learn from them. And you just, just plug that somewhere into your life. And then when you've learned, you can move on and learn from somebody else. And you can shift and change that. It's fluid. And it's it's about just adjusting that and adapting it until you're happy with your circle of 10. And, and I found that a really powerful lesson over about the last five, six years for me is to be aware of who is in my top 10. And that does mm -hmm. shift. When I was writing a book before Christmas, there were people in my top 10 who are now not there because they've moved out and other people have come in to coach me with business and other things. Um, and, and it does shift as you go along as with life and as challenges change, the, the people who support you change. But just being aware of who's in that circle of influence, I think, can be a really powerful way of ensuring that you surround yourself with positive people, um, people you want to take influence from and become an average of. So sorry, I'm off on one again. <laughs> but yeah, that's fine. That, that circle of influence, and like you said, cutting out the news, um, clearing out your feed on social media. If somebody's constantly posting negative stuff or stuff that negatively impacts you, you mm. can either mute their notifications or you can cut them off your friends list. Um, you know, or just ask them not to tag you on certain products. If you're close enough to that person, you don't want to to be befriend them on or you know unfriend them on facebook or social media just ask them if they cannot copy you on certain messages and i've had to do that and people send me what they think is jokey stuff and i find it really like cringeworthy you know it's like oh i don't want to know that in my life but they find things funny because somebody's had an accident or done something illegal and like i don't want to know about that just please don't send it to me but if it's somebody i'm not so familiar with um and, and they're just sort of a distant connection on facebook they might discreetly disappear off my friends list, you know. So it's yeah. it's still important to surround yourself with the right people all the time. And it's it's controllable more than I think people realise. But you just need to, to, to be aware. And it's like anything. You can't fix something you're not aware of. And that's what's great about having conversations like this is helping people to become aware of strategies like the circle of influence, like the top 10 people. Um, you know all the strategies we've we've talked about tonight and I can't believe this hour has nearly gone already um so <laughs> it's flew by hasn't it I know absolutely and I do absolutely truly appreciate how open and, and amazing you've been talking about this tonight and uh is there any other strategies that you would like to share with us before we wind up for the, for the evening um I don't think so. I think that's that's the main one that I I look at or or use as such. Um, yeah, the, the the not really the the main one for me is is just the control. Focus on the things that you can can control, and Absolutely. things will get better. Absolutely, yeah, and. That's the thing, it does. And it might only be better for a day, might be better for a week, might be better for a month, and then you might have low times again. But it's about also having gratitude. I think it's another one. When you have those good days, have gratitude for it as well. I think there are so many tips and tricks and strategies that we could share. We could start off for another hour if we get down that route. Um, but what I will say is if anybody wants to know any more, you have some amazing guests on your podcast. So if anybody wants to follow yeah. Michael's podcast, it's Tangled Mind. And we'll drop a link to that in here as well um, after the talk. And uh, again, if anybody else wants to learn some of these strategies that I've talked about tonight, I do have a private Facebook group, um, which is called Brain Unchained. And I do personal development strategies every day and I run a topic every week. So last week we talked about inter independence. This week I'm talking about interdependence. 
and why both are important again finding that balance in life about the moments when you have that freedom to do things for yourself and being aware of how much we do depend on I thought it was quite funny I posted this morning about even just getting up to get a cup of coffee in the morning you realize how interdependent we are all I do is live on my own walk through there make a cup of coffee it feels independent but when you really think about how many people you rely on to have that cup of coffee on your table in the morning it's quite shocking I think I probably can think probably up to about 100 people would have to be involved for me to have that cup of coffee in the morning um, when you think about all the processes and chains of everything with your water, your electric, your manufacturer, your mm. kettle, your mug, the coffee, the sugar, <laughs> the milk, you know, all the packaging, everything comes in. And actually, we are all really, really interdependent human beings. And I think it's important to embrace that. Um, so if anybody wants to learn any of this as well in the Facebook group, um, but 100 percent, I could not do this show without the amazing guests like you, Michael. So thank you so much indeed. No, thank um, you for having me. You're very, very welcome. And I do wish you all the best with your podcast. And I absolutely am looking forward, as I say, to seeing when you and your family all finally manage to get back together. And uh, just to tag me in on the photographs because I want to see all your smiles. It's going to be amazing. And I'm sure your mum will tag me in anyway. I know she will. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure she will. I'm sure she will. But no, she's yeah. Um, love the bits. Yeah. No, well, she's a great woman. No problem at all. Thank you so much indeed. And thank you to everybody who's watched in tonight. And I will put this on YouTube later. So if anybody is watching this for a first time, um, there, this is part of a 52 night, a 52 week challenge for me to do a, a podcast, a, a quick podcast or a live discussion a week. And I do put them all onto YouTube so you can catch up with all of the replays. And again, I will put the link in that for that in the chat afterwards as well as putting this one up in the week coming for anybody who wants to share it so thank you ever so much once again and uh, we'll have a catch up backstage in a minute and we'll see everybody again next tuesday at 7 p.m gmt and next week i have uh, bear with me susan horwell who will be talking about self-love in terms of overcoming uh, life's traumas uh, through self-love is really important to her and again she has written a book and I will put that one up for you in the week to follow and share ready for next Tuesday. So thank you, everybody, for watching in. Have an amazing week. And um, yes, very quickly before we go, if that's but taking one day at a time is my own way of controlling my feelings and helps to get me through each day. When my emotions are low this year, when my emotions are low this year has been an emotional roller coaster with so many ups and downs thank you so much Yvette and I think we can all all reflect on that one and like you say a day at a time um so treat each day with some challenges and goals to set celebrate the rewards and reward yourself for the the successes that you have don't be too hard on yourself be there for each other and um there is plenty of positive influence online in books on films just just go out and enjoy what you can we may not be able to access all of life but enjoy every little bit that you can and make the most of it see you all next week bye bye oh we're trying to end broadcast here we go